UCY.TV radio listeners. This is Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission radio show. Carol is an unaffiliated presidential candidate. She jumped in the game super late after watching what's been going on. And um, Carol, I want to thank you to the show and I want to ask you a question. What made you decide that you were just going to run for president so late in the game after, you know, we've had this huge... uh, Really, it isn't really turning into an election. It's more like a selection. We already know what's going to happen. Exactly. Um, I was fed up with the rhetoric of the political games that they play and the backbiting. And, you know, uh, it's just a travesty that it's like two children on the playground fighting over some toy that's in the uh, sandbox. You know, and so everybody resorts to name calling and, um, you know, fabricating things. And that's not what the American people really, truly care to see. I think, you know, they need to uh, put the big boy panties and the big girl panties on and get down to the crux of the issues that this nation faces and um, not to be playing the games. Well, you know, this is the interesting thing is that that that's kind of what we've actually seen happens with the president's presidency. I for myself, this election has shown me that the presidency more than anything is really just a figurehead. Like uh no matter what who gets in office, I really believe that they're going to start taking orders pretty quickly or their lives are threatened. So if you were president, how well, how would you combat that? What would you do? Let's say you magically got elected president. How would you combat the corruption inside the White House, inside Congress? If my life was threatened? Yeah. Would you just come uh, well, out publicly? Well, I, I tell you what, I, I would stand up for truth and justice irrespective of that threat. And if they did whatever, then that's on them. My blood would be on their hands. But I would not deter from the course that I have set for myself and for this nation and the people that are within it, because you have to stand strong, and I do solely believe in what my efforts for this country are, and I'm just tired of all the the mess that, you know, and, and when you said the presidential campaign gets to where, you know, they play these games and everything. That's politics, period. It doesn't matter if someone's running for representative of the state or if they're a senator. It's still all the 
the puppet show of everyone that's playing their little game and everybody doing the name calling. And where are the real issues, you know, that this country's facing that they need to address these issues? And my number one thing is, uh, what uh, are they doing, which I know apparently they're not, because I called Senator Rand Paul and I called Mitch McConnell, my state reps, and um, or federal reps, I should say, because they're congressional members. Uh, what are you doing about Fukushima Daiichi? You know, no this kidding. is over five years. Yeah. But they won't answer that question. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're this probably, is a you, global you are, issue. Fact, you're the only president, I mean, you're the only presidential candidate I've heard even mention that name, Fukushima Daiichi, really, for real. I have just gone to your website, Carol, ba Carol Bohannon, 2016. CarolBohannon.com. It's Carol Bohannon for President, 2016. And I notice on your page it says, uh, "Run for President." I need eight registered voter voters with names that will go to Frankfort, Kentucky, in December. What is that about? What does that mean? Tell us the story of well, how, how a person who is not affiliated becomes a presidential candidate in your state. Yeah, it's not the same. Um thing is somebody that's on the ballot, you know, the, the game rules change. When it's a write-in, you have to have eight registered voters that are willing to back you in a separate type of a vote. You've had the voting on November 8th, and then you have to, your, your six uh, people have to go up there, or eight people, I'm sorry, let me take it back, it's eight people that I need to go up there and cast their ballot to support me, and then all the votes of my state, the Commonwealth, is transferred then to Washington, D.C. But I have to have my people in this state, Commonwealth, to back me and go up there to cast their individual ballots, okay? Now, we're not talking about the voting for the president. We're talking about them supporting me as a candidate. And then they have to go there personally, these eight people, and sign a ballot. And then everything, all the records are sent to Washington, D.C. Well, on top of that, you have the other challenge. There's only 43 states that allow write-in ballots. Uh, Nevada, uh, South Dakota, yeah, Oklahoma. Yeah, there's seven that do Arkansas, not allow. They're, right, Hawaii. They're, Mississippi and Louisiana, they do not allow it. And also, most states require that the candidate register. But there are some states like ours, mine in Oregon, Vermont, Wyoming, Oregon, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Iowa, Delaware, and Alabama. They don't require registration. So you don't have to register in those states for your write-in to count. So it, it well, is an uphill battle that they've created. Oh, yeah, it, it certainly is. It is an uphill battle, and I've, I'm, you know, not even, I'm just at the foothill of the mountain. <laughs> I haven't even started climbing it yet, and I have very little time to do it. But if the American people will stand up with me, and, and I, I put out a, a letter last night, which I will keep to myself for the time being, because I asked a certain individual, uh, which is a billionaire, uh, I asked this individual by email if they would be my vice president. And uh, they're very um, knowledgeable in the financial industry. And uh, they made some remarks about uh, Donald Trump. And uh, Donald Trump was all for the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. He wants to alter it somewhat, but it's a bad deal for the American people. Okay. You know, I did several stories on it's that. It's a bad deal um, for the um, entire planet. It's a bad deal for the people in those countries that are going to be allowed to be slave laborers. And the well, worst part about serves the me, there's only 12 or 13 countries that even signed on to it. The rest of them have not. That's right. And, you know, this is the thing. So, like, Really, what they're trying to do is like what NAFTA did, is override our rules here in the United States. Canada had an issue where they said no to, I think it was Exxon Mobil drilling in one of their national parks. Exxon took them to court and won. So now they are drilling in their national park and spilling. There are spills there now. Within five years, they right. started spilling. So uh, this is... Uh, um, 
it's it's like a two year old going rampant, and that that's really why I appreciate your candidacy. We need people to speak out and start talking about the this absolute disregard for our planet. Exactly, because they're destroying the air, the land, and the sea. You know, I mean, the wildlife that's in the oceans due to Fukushima and and chemical runoffs from the land. Uh, there, there's a lot, you know, and uh, what happened up there at Hanford years ago. Um, it's been a while We're since I did this on. story. So I, I mean, Hanford is still. Uh, well, Hanford's yeah, it's leaking. Fire. The hundred, the hundred and seventy-seven tanks that they have up there that's holding, you know, the radioactive uh, waste and everything. They're all leaking into the ground. That's gotten into the water table that leaked out into the Columbia River, which goes down into the Pacific Ocean, which has uh, tainted the water for 36 or 37 towns that are along the Columbia from the route from Hanford all the way to the ocean. But they're not doing anything about it. You know, it's just laying there. You know, it's contaminated. It's not going to go away. That's you know, how do you clean up an entire river that runs from up there in Washington all the way through 37 or so towns all the way out to the Pacific Ocean. Well, there is I mean, that's about that. as asinine as, uh, 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 that's about as asinine as Fukushima Daiichi and the people at TEPCO that ran that power plant that has six reactors there. How in the world did they really think that do, going out with their little buckets and their brushes and all this stuff Sweeping the debris off the houses. We're talking hot particles. We're talking uranium, plutonium, isotopes, uh, gamma rays. Um, you know, all, all this stuff that is uh, coming down even today. I mean, this plant, I have videotaped this plant blowing up so many times since the March 11, 2011, when it originally blew up. And this is still an atmosphere. What are they doing about it? Have they put a, a sarcophagus around it? I mean, even though that probably wouldn't do a whole heck of a lot of good, but because it's nothing as compared to Chernobyl. Chernobyl didn't have a full fission meltdown. Fukushima Daiichi did. But you also have its sister plant, Fukushima Dini, Dini, or D I call it Denai. You know, D-I-N-I, Denai. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it, it got hit, too, but they kept that one under wraps. And, um, you know, it was only seven miles south of Fukushima Daiichi. Well, this so, is you know, thing, that got good well. It got hit. Huh? We need a whole reset on our government values, which is why oh, independent certainly. candidates are valuable, in at least in a discussion. We all know that uh, the Clinton has uh, been anointed. Let's just put it to you that way. Like, she's already murdered three people. There's nothing getting in her way. They are, she's going to get into the office no matter what. The, I mean, it doesn't matter. She's, and, you know, Julian Assange is saying he's going to have these email releases that will prevent her from getting into office. Probably not. He's not going to make it till October. So I appreciate right. your candidacy. Let's, let's talk about what are the highlights of your candidacy and the things that drove well, you I, I want to go see through this. CMOs. I want GMOs to go. Uh, I think it's time, high time, that the American people are fed decent food. Uh, you know, these chemicals they put on the fields and everything, there are different uh, methods of using holistic things. You know, marigolds deters insects from eating plants. Russia uh, just planted destroyed in with all the their field, GMOs. You know. Russia just destroyed Pardon all me? their GM. Russia just banned GMOs and have destroyed all of their GMO crops. So all right. along the entire nation, the gigantic nation of Russia, which has very harsh environment, much harsher in many of their areas than we do, uh, they have banned GMOs and they plan on feeding all of their people. So this business that we need GMOs to cr create more food is a false paradigm. It's a false narrative. So what is, right. what's another one of your well, platforms? An, another issue is the checkbook needs to be shut. I'm tired of seeing where Obama or previous presidents write out a big check amount to another country until this country's poor are helped 
truly helped here. When the hungry, there are no, no more people that are hungry in our nation. Uh, there needs to be a health care system, but not this Obamacare, because all that did was mess everything up. And they've lost, I think it was $300 million or, or more uh, on that I read well, the other the, day. The health care uh, industry is refusing to re-up on Obamacare. Humana, the biggest health care yeah. provider in the country, has just told the government they're not going to participate in Obamacare. <laughs> Right. So uh, our children need to actually be educated. Um, I think teachers need to be screened on, uh, uh, you know, background checks on these people. Some of these people get in this to have access to the children, and then they ended up abusing them. And, uh, you know, that that's not uh, right. Our, our children are our most important asset in this country and they should be guarded and protected and guided and taught real education and not this dumbed-down uh, attitude that they've done to our children. Our nation's education system needs a major overhaul. And I think that when uh, that it should be free when, when the children are graduated from high school. That they need a break. You know, I don't believe that it takes 12 years to teach a child an education. I really don't. I don't think it takes 12 years of their life to teach them what's in those books. And those books need to be revised and the history revised to put the truth out there of what this country... Are you aware that there were seven or eight black presidents previous to Abraham... I mean, not Abraham, George Washington... That's up there in the, in the archives in Washington, D.C. So Obama was not the first black president. It was also an indigenous native, okay, that ended up, they used their, the natives, you know, I'm talking about the Native Americans, but I don't consider them um, Americans per se because we were a country before they ever showed up, you know, from from. Columbus, a so-called discovery in America. That's a farce. How can you discover something that's already inhabited? It might be a discovery for you because you hopped on a boat and found us. But that doesn't, uh, you know, mean that you just discovered it, that it just came into existence. So what you're talking so about here is... here you have the, the natives that were indigenous to this land that literally wrote the Constitution to this country. They used it as a guideline for the Constitution that is of today. Yeah, we, but very few people do their homework and, and know this, you know. Well, this is but the that's issue. a fact. The issue about education, you know, in Finland, in Finland, they do not give kids homework, and they're the number one highest level of uh, achievement in all of the nations that are... I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do about our education plan. So let's move on because we have about 35 minutes left. So okay. your education should be Well, I, I want to make this Universal one thing clear. I, I want to make something really clear here on the Constitution. The, the, the indigenous people had a contract between the tribes, all right? And they used that because it was so well constructed and respected by those that were of this land then. So that's how the Constitution came about being, because they adopted the methods that the indigenous people of this country abided by. Okay? So mm -hmm. I just had to say that little part. All right, so, um, you know, um, health care needs to be fixed. Education system needs to be fixed. The What's banks your idea about need to be held security? accountable. What do you think about the NSA? They need to put the Social Security money back. They should not have and never had the right to tamper with that, to rob Peter, to pay Paul, whatever they did up there. Whoever was in, uh, you know, that was a party to taking that money out and doling it wherever, whatever other system that was there, they need to put it back. All of it needs to put it back. 
So, Carol, this, and, um, really, this is what you're, the things you're talking about are common sense things, but the issue is how do we accomplish that when we have a system of governance where the lobbyists sort of rule the day? Congress has a lot of power. And well, that's something Congress else again. That's another power. issue with me. The lobbyists need to go. The lobbyists, all they do is pamper and entice and hold little trinkets out there for the politicians to sway their vote this way or that. And I don't think that should be legal. Forget the po- uh, the lobbyists. They need to get out of the system there, you know, because all they're doing is hindering the we, the people. But also the prison system. All these people that are locked up over uh, offenses to deal with uh, uh, pot, cannabis, reefer, whatever they, you know, all the names for it is. But they need to be open to sales and let these people go. You know, this is absolutely ridiculous. Why should the American people be paying uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars per year per prisoner over a pot issue? Well, because you the know, pharmaceutical companies, this is why, Carol, the pharmaceutical organizations that run a certain segment of our government absolutely push very, very hard for illegal, uh, to keep uh, marijuana on the uh, uh you know, a super felony. I mean, that's partly what it's a, it is. You know, the government has really just issued it, reissued a statement under the pressure of most states legalizing marijuana or cannabis. Let's call it cannabis, its real name. Uh, but what happens is, again, we have the lobbyists running the government, just like the EPA is being run by Republic Services in St. Louis to the detriment of the people in St. Louis who are breathing in toxic air 24 hours a day for the last five years. So the issue yeah. is, how, you know, how do we, uh, as we, you know, we, we hire a representative in, as, as our president, let's say, but how do we, if you were to magically get in, what do we do to convince Congress that we have to stand up for America instead of taking in the big bucks? What is it that we have to do? Well, uh, the Senate and Congress, the members of both, they have set on their honkers, not represented the people. There is such a thing called a 5 U.S.C. 7311. I've been screaming that law for a long time because if they usurp the constitution of this country, then they are to be outed from office. Now, the American people are being lax in their duty for their country. They just let these people up there in Washington, D.C., what I call the district of criminals, to run them up. Now, they need to hold their politicians accountable. They need to call them on the daggone phone every day, if need be, to end up holding them accountable and asking them and telling them, you are usurping the Constitution of this country. You are not abiding by it. You are not representing me, whereby you are a treasonous and a tyranny and a traitor to this country. And I'll guarantee you, if people did just a little bit of investigation on their computers to find out who voted for the TPP, that makes them a daggone uh, felon, a federal law. That makes them a felon because they've gone against the Constitution of this country. Okay? If they've signed that TPP, they are a traitor. Well, it's like H.R. 3162. And uh, the majority of all of them... Carol, it's like a House Resolution 3162, introduced in 2001 by uh, Jim Sensenbrenner, right after the 2011 attack. It was passed the next day. No one even thought about it. No one even thought about it. They passed the Unpatriot Act, which allowed people to... Really, which allowed our government to really invade our privacy. It really threw out a lot of our protections. So this is one of the things that now, because our Congress has neglected its duty, we have a country that's pretty much lawless. This is why your candidacy, yeah, you're right. really, it's a token candidacy. Let's be honest. It's a token candidacy. You're running to poke these people in the eye to say, you can't stop us all, and we're all going to keep trying to take our country back. Because really that... Right. Like, well, I don't want to poke anybody in the eye, but I do want the offices up there swept out. 
because it's dirty. It needs to be scrutinized. It needs to be put under a magnifying glass like they've done all the people out here. You know, this hefting up with the police force across this country. As soon as Obama went into office, it was he outfitted everybody with riot gear. You know, the best there was out there to be made. Well, why is that? That's true. That is a true statement. You know, but the people aren't barking back and saying, what the hell are you doing? It's like our voting machine. I mean, it's time that the bullshit, and and pardon my French here to your viewers, but uh, there comes a time when a little bit of cussing uh, pays, uh, you know, it it, is... uh, everything <laughs> well, they in say nutshell is smarter, Carol. They say people that cuss are smarter. But this is the other issue is thinking about this whole thing. I mean, it's it's not just that. It's it's everything across the line. It's not just the militarization of the police. It's our voting machines. They used to be able, when they first came out, they could flip the vote 3 4%. Now they have the capacity to flip the vote 25 to 35%. That's been proven. There's a lawsuit going on in Ohio. A guy is taking the Democratic Party to task on this one because there's a lot of uh, uh, machine tampering that has been proved and so he's actually suing the democratic party on that i was reading his brief the other night it's 35 to 45 percent that they can flip the vote now so is that democracy when we go to these machines i mean i'm all about the purple thumb let's get out the i mean i i wouldn't mind going to put my ballot in and stick my finger in a in in a piece of video the other day and I did a short stint story on it, where Obama, watching him come out of his mouth saying that the the republic of this nation was soon going to die, you know, it's going to be done deal. It's going to be over. And that oh, his over. presidency would be the last, you know, something along those lines. But it's time that the American people woke up and and held these people accountable and call them up and tell their representatives no more, no well, more. This, you work for me. And this and, is what you I'm know, saying. It, Vote for somebody else. Uh, this this election is the first time in my life I am not going to straight. I am not voting for a Democrat. I will not vote for one Democrat. I they're am, both the same. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, true, Republican, Democrat, 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 whatever. They're all in the bed together. You know, I call, that's I been a farce pulled over the American people's eyes. It, it's you been know. pretty obvious we live in the United Soviet States of America where we have one party, the Republicrats, and the only, only the vote for the right candidate counts. Everything else doesn't matter. And unless we choose to have something different, that's what we're going to keep having. Our silence is complicity. People who refuse to stand up. And to, you and I don't agree on issues. Let's just be clear. Most of my viewers know I'm like a hardcore flame and liberal. I mean, there's many things right, I don't let, believe let me, are right. Let, let me say this. My slogan is a vote for me is a vote for you. But I have to say that you know, uh, my hope is in the American people, every man, woman, and child. And I have suffered many atrocities in my life and trials and tribulations, which my experience and survival of them have made me who I am today. And how I ask, because Trump, he's a billionaire. Hillary, she's probably that time and again. And how can someone be a president of this nation that is a racist, or someone that runs with nefarious characters around the world that are known to be killers. And how can, if you've never suffered hardship, how can you relate to the American people and those that have? If you've never suffered discrimination, how can you uh, relate to someone who has? How can you relate to the working poor or the blue-collar worker if you've never been a uh, a blue-collar worker, you know? Now, they can get all these endorsements and all this, you know, jump on the bandwagon, get behind Trump, who's a known racist, and he's no more qualified to be president than I am right here in Owensboro on Ridgewood Street because I am a bit older than Trump. 
And I do have a lot of knowledge. And I know how to deal with things diplomatically. So, you know, what? Because he has his billions. I view this uh, presidency of these, my opponents, right now, here, as being buying the presidency because they have the money to get their names out there. Now, I dealt and called and contacted every media source via email and phone. And all I got was a local news, 44 News, put me on the local news for a stint of probably a minute. Really? Under FCC rules, I should have had the same time afforded me as both of my opponents. But that's not being done. So they are, in fact, breaking the law. Well, let's uh, invite people to come to your website. It's carolbohannon.com. So I'm speaking with Carol Bohannon, who is an indi- unaffiliated. She's not independent. She's an unaffiliated candidate for the presidency. She jumped in the race late into the game when she saw the calamity that was going on. And actually, uh, there have been. I've, wa- I've read all those uh, stories that you've talked to about in your local newspaper. People in your area are pretty excited. Now, in order for Carol to actually be on the ballot in her state she needs what eight registered voters in her state to go to frankfurt in december and say they want her on the ballot it's not in december no 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 no. they'll never put me on the ballot this is for a write-in only okay so i tell cannot us what nor has do to i have tell us, me? What has to, tell us what has to happen what has to happen i yeah. need a running mate I, i'm looking for one, and um, I need eight voters, registered voters in my Commonwealth state, Kentucky, that are willing to drive to Frankfurt um, in December to cast their personal ballot December, for the elections uh, in November. Yeah, but this is a separate thing. This has nothing to do with the uh, voting in November 8th. Okay. This has to do with them wanting me as the state's representative to go to Washington for candidacy or for the presidency. This is a separate deal. This is totally different. It's a different thing when it's a write-in versus someone being on a ballot, which I can't be on the ballot. Now, what I, I want to convey to your viewers or listeners that... Um, I am going to see about raising money. I uh, I haven't got it all ironed out on the, the bits and pieces here yet, but I called an ad uh, newspaper yesterday, and they said, you know, that it was going to run about 1400 and some odd dollars, uh, and I think that was for a month. But she didn't even know what I wanted to run, so I don't know if it's for a whole page or what, but I need for three months at that rate to get my name across this nation because the MSM, mainstream media, will not afford me the time that everybody else is having in order to get my name out there. If I take a personal ad out in this newspaper that has, I forget how many, hundreds of thousands or million, whatever it was, it was astronomical, and the the view capacity that they have that it goes across this nation. So, you know, if I can get that done and get my name out there, all those people have to do is to write my name on their ballot. And I'm asking people to do so because the majority rules here. Well, That's let's according spell to the your name. Let's spell your name uh, for them. Let's spell their name. All right. So spell C- it C-A-R-O-L. B O H A N N O N. Write my name on your ballot. But let me tell you what you need to uh, do is to call your clerk for the voting uh, place and get an absentee ballot. You write my name on that ballot. You make a copy, two copies of it. You keep one for yourself. You mail the original back to your clerk by registered mail, FedEx, where you get an instant receipt. An instant receipt. And then you mail me the other copy. With your name, your address, and your phone number. 
because then when it tallies up on that presidential election, we'll see what the votes are between Trump and Hillary and me. The majority rules. That's the Constitution. Well, I think that we have this, what this election has really shown us is that we, our Constitution has literally been subverted into something it was never intended to be. They have legislated. You're right there. They have legislated our Constitution into something that is not our Constitution. The Unpatriot Act alone took away more than half of our All of that needs to go out into the trash can. All the executive orders that Obama has done, it's against this nation, needs to be trashed. It, It is null and void from the moment he wrote them. The NDAA, the TPP, all this malarkey that has been signed that they expect the American people to bow down to. We have only one of those to bow down to, and that's the the Father in Heaven. The NDAA was passed by our Congress as well as Obama, so it's not just... Yeah, and and, and they didn't even read it. No, they They didn't. They said so. Look, they didn't even read it. Listen to this. The Unpatriot Act was introduced on October 23rd. It was passed the next day and it was passed on the senate on october 25th nobody read yeah, it. that's a lot of smoke and mirrors and behind the scenes bs is what i call nobody because read they it. didn't do their jobs well what they did do they did do their jobs they did the jobs that they were hired to do by the corporations who put them in office they have sealed right, up right, our yeah. rights and we have militarized our police to the point where we now, in fact, there was a report that came out in uh, Baltimore that shows 100% that the Baltimore police are being trained to be uh, uh, racist towards people of color. They're being trained to operate on a zero tolerance level, and it's like military respect to the police. So this is why, like, these, you know, like, Jill Stein, uh, Gary Johnson, this country into a Nazi regime. I mean, we need alternatives to the status quo because the status quo is strangling us. I mean, we are literally battered wives, and they got their th- hands around our throat and they're punching us in the face every single day right now. It is really outrageous what we are allowing our country to become and who we are. I mean, we have a country full of people who don't want to talk about it. We have a country full of people who don't want to talk about the fact that, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton really is really and seriously all stealing. Yeah, let me election. interrupt you there. All, all these illegals that are coming in by, by the droves, you know, uh, all these people that walk here. They've been flown in, bust in, whatever. But they need to be turned around and headed back to their own countries. They have problems and being poor and do this, that, and the other. I don't know how they ever made it here to begin with without the help of the powers that be that got them here. No you know, they didn't walk the entire distance from well, South you know America. Why? But you know why people come here? Because American corporations go down to, because of NAFTA, they go down to South America, they go down to Central America, and on paper they're saying they're paying people $1.50, $2 an hour, and in reality they're paying them 35 to $0.75 cents an hour. My ex-husband was offered a job for 70 70- Again, that document needs to be trashed. But these people need to go home because I'm tired of hearing the stories of how they are tapped into the Social Security program, they're tapped into the health care program, they're tapped into the food stamp program. I mean, give me a break. Look, Carol, those are stories, and I'm going to defend them because those are all stories. I know people who are undocumented in this country. They do not get, the only services they do get that really is afforded to every single person in our country, if you have a... We cannot, we cannot, as the American people, the world is always going to have its poor. It's not for these countries to say, oh, well, let's send them our murderers, let's well, send them our racists, the let's is send them our the poor so that we're unsaddled with them, you know. The reason that we have the poor is because, A, the corporations in this country want them. That's why they're here. 
That's why they are here. We have laws in our country on the books right now. For every undocumented worker that gets busted, it's a $1,000 fine to the corporations. Do you know that only Walmart has paid for 18 people? They are the only people who have been charged with that fine ever. So th this is the well, thing. When you talk about we need to reset our government, there's many things. Our government is super sick. And that's why, like, vote look, for... I don't, I don't have a problem with different nationalities coming to this country if they want to become an American. But if you're here for a handout, turn your butt around and go home and ask your officials, what the hell are you doing for me? Because the don't... American people are fed up with forking out money for people that want to sit back and expect a check, and they're not doing anything for this country or for these people of this country. And I, I just don't see bringing all these people over here. They want to change our ways. They want to change our traditions. Well, I say what? When I went into my Kroger store and they had a daggone Mexican flag sitting on the meat counter, and uh, Cinto de Mayo, whatever music playing over the loudspeaker, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I mean, that is BS. You know, now, I don't have a problem with the Mexican people, but if they wanted and live and love their country so daggone much, what the hell are you doing here? You know what they're Go doing Go back here. home to your country, you know but do like not try to change America. Carol, you know what it's about? Um, American corporations are all over Mexico, driving out farmers, driving out the small businesses, and they want to hire them for 35 cents an hour. If you could work well, with the state... they can't drive out the farmers since we're in a hell America now is getting our food. Seeing how Warren Buffett threw out all the water, the five, jeez, uh, um, those... I can't think of the name of the reservoirs. The reservoirs that he bought up and loosed it out into the Pacific Ocean. Five years of water stored up to use for the citrus fruits and everything that grow out there. They're trying to kill this nation and to starve it to death. And they're doing the same thing down in Florida. You know, it's all whacked up, but what with core eggs at 9,500? And uh, all the stuff, the putrid stuff, that they end up spraying down there, you know. 20,000 so, people died down there. You know that? We have about 10,000. I mean 10,000. We have about 10 minutes left. Uh, let's talk about something else that's pretty big on your agenda, which is the military. Um, you are one of these people that believes we need to bring all of our troops home. What would we do with those hun millions of soldiers that are no longer going to be needed? I mean, uh, you know, maybe an education program? I, I know. I, I don't believe they would no longer be needed. Uh-uh. It's a dangerous world out there. I say keep them on the payroll. Yeah. Keep them on the payroll. Because we're going to need them. You've got Russia, you got Iran, you got North Korea, and you have China. And they and want we to have do Indian harm point. to America. <laughs> and we have Indian uh, Point. We have Indian Point. I mean... <laughs> I'm no. sorry. What? Indian Point nuclear power plant's about to explode. So, I mean, you know, what the Russians did, they they sacrificed 250,000 or so of their own soldiers to stop Chernobyl. I think that might be needed here in New York when it happens. Well, New York, what well, with Indian Point, you've got uh, 277 two-inch stainless steel bolts that went missing, either disintegrated or it's floating around in a reactor. But those dodos up there that run the reactor, they got, it got shut down. You have a number two reactor and a number three reactor. It's sister plant uh, built identical to the number two reactor, but they're not going to check in until, I think, 2018 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they turned it off. Uh, the Friends of the Earth environmentalist group ended up getting it shut down by emergency order through the court. And they ended up shutting it down. Well, they fired it back up on June 12th, and they still don't know where the bolts are, and it only takes one bolt to wedge itself between the jet stream of that daggone water that's cooling those reactor rods for that place to blow up. So, yeah, I'm waiting any day 
for that to happen. And it's sitting 26 miles from New York that has 20 million people in their population. They would have, so they say, an hour and a half to evacuate. And that's not going to happen. That, uh, you can't evacuate 20, um, 20 million people in an hour and a half. You've got a gridlock, you know, with the roads and the highways, and, and they, they only have a certain amount of roads there to get out. You think all them people, uh-uh, it's not going to happen. I think they're waiting. And I called 17 congressional members, calling them to ask them, please do an emergency congressional hearing on the Indian Point power plant. Governor Cuomo, however you say his name, he's been trying to get it shut down for a long time. But I don't see that he's trying too damn hard. Now, you know, he needs to get his officials in his state. Well, his Chuck Schumer, Senator Chuck Schumer, just they came out. They just recently, this last week, they passed a $500 million to the New York State taxpayers are going to give $500 million to Indian Point in the next year to keep it open. And Chuck Schumer says he has deemed oh it to God. be... Yeah, he says he's deemed it to be necessary for the people of New York until they show, you know, how they can replace the energy without regard to the fact that... It isn't have necessary because Canada okay. has a nuclear power plant up there that they could deal with all the electrical needs that New York has. Yeah, well, the whole All they thing gotta do is, is just pipe it in from uh, up in Canada. Well, you know, Chuck Schumer is the Wall Street senator. You know, I mean, he he is he is only looking out for big, 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 big business, and we little people don't matter to Chuck Schumer. So that's oh the, no, no. But this is the thing. How, these officials, these this political is why, figures, they don't the, give a shit about us. You know. Well, this is why. Out there. This is why we have to have independent candidates, and people need to vote non-streamlined parties we have got to shake it up like i i personally will not vote for any of my uh, elected officials that i have been voting for who i think have done relatively decent job but when you think about it in the long run they've all been complicit with all of this and i'm done saying oh well that's good enough i'm not yeah gonna vote for you know they create time. these rule books you know but the rule books are for us we the people the laws that they create are for us, we the people, because it's uh, up in, in our face that they don't abide by the rules. They don't abide by the laws. We see that with Hillary Clinton and all her email escapades and, you know, uh, whether or not she's ever going to see, uh, you know, uh, being held accountable for her wrongdoings is yet to be seen. And now I'm seeing the bombardment on all the news and propaganda and indoctrination. Oh, let's have pity on Hillary because she, you know, has some health problems now. Now, I view it like this. Because Clinton, or Bill Clinton, he's sitting in her convention and so-called fell asleep. Really? Fell asleep in her convention? I think it's all a ploy. I think it's all a little menagerie they have going because they're going to end up escaping. You know, she's wanting to escape prosecution because she knows the noose is getting tighter around her neck. So these politicians have dual citizenships. And I think it's going to be an escape route that they'll end up saying, oh, uh, she died in her sleep or had a brain hemorrhage or whatever, or Bill did, and, you know, then off off they go to Tahiti or wherever, you know. I, I don't know. But I think it'll be the underground, you know. Hmm. So you but think stand that's up for America, folks. Huh? Do you, what, do you think that what's going to happen at the end is she's just going to disappear? And then, I mean, like, if she disappears before the election, though, Bernie Sanders would be the candidate, and they certainly don't want that because he would win astoundingly. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, there is yeah, no way. I don't know. So this is the thing. We have this. We, you know what? I just looked at the clock. I apologize. We have uh, three minutes left. So let's go over what your website is. Tell people how they can get in touch with you and what you'd like them to do. Okay. I need you to get your absentee ballots and get them mailed to you at your home. Write my name, Carol Bohannon. B-O-H-A-N-N-O-N, on your ballot. 
make a copy of it, two of them, one for me, one for you, and mail the original back by FedEx to your uh, voting place, <clears throat> your clerk, your town clerk. And um, you can contact me through my YouTube channel, which is W H E P I N G W I L L O W numerical number 2. You can call me at 270-922-0936. That is my phone number, prank calls. And if you don't let your number come through on the phone, I will not answer the phone. I don't take restricted or non-published and all that. You know who I am. I put myself out there. I stand for we, the people, the American people. I'm not a politician. I'm somebody that's fed up with the rhetoric of the politicians. I want to work for you, and I don't want a check to do it. I will not accept a check. And they get a hefty sum, $400,000 a year. I don't want it. I want to work for the people. I've been doing stuff for the people for many, many years, and I don't get paid for it. Okay. You know, I just want to help humanity. And your website, and it's a brand new website, so it's not completed. Some one of uh, her, uh, one of her supporters is building this website. It's carolbohannon.com, dot com. C a r o l b o h a n n o n dot com. We have about forty five seconds left. I want to thank you, Carol, for joining us, and I want to thank our listeners for hanging in there during that first ten minutes when there was some kind of a mix-up with connecting with the radio program. So we really appreciate you hanging in there and listening to Carol. Uh, obviously, it is a, an objection vote. The system is rigged against anybody who wants to fight it, but you know what? We still need to stand up, and no matter what, it is imperative that we put our courage feet on and take action in any action that you believe is important. It is time for America to rediscover her integrity, her ethics, and let's teach our youth what ethics and integrity is really all about. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Carol, for joining us. And, thank uh, you, Lonnie. Thank, thank you so much. You.